wanted to uh, tell you that what's most unique about our stretch night is it's completely produced, directed, and acted by students. We got a grant from the student government, and they very generously gave us some money for us to put on the show. And so we'd like to encourage all the students in our university, whether you're into drama or not, if you're just interested in the technical side, or maybe you see out on stage, come out and participate, because it's a lot of fun. So enjoy the show. Ha, ha, ha. 
You know I make decisions for this entire department. It's a lonely and treacherous job. I make the, the hard decisions, the, the people decisions. Who goes up and who goes down, and who stays shackled in place in bureaucratical leg irons until all the hope is lost. <laughs> what does that say? Void. Modern industry. Well, you'll be standing there long. <laughs> Here. Yes, there. That's exactly what I meant when I said there. Is there some place else I should stand? This is my favorite time of the whole day. Night coming on, drinking my coffee, looking out at the river, all by myself. I don't know where else to go. There are limited vistas for observing the sunset. Yes, but this is my view. It cheapens it if you're looking at the exact same thing as me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to look at something else. Over there, for example. Well, you won't know what I'm looking at, so how will you know what it's safe for you to look at? Well, I'll look over this way, and you look over that But way. some of my favorite things are over on your side. <laughs> you look upstream. It's the only solution if you're going to remain here. All right. Is the river always like this? I, I don't think I've ever encountered this color in nature before. The colors vary according to our manufacturing cycle. <laughs> By Thursday, it positively glows. <laughs> Hanrahan, I'm sorry for anything I might have said about your typing. What did Merkin say about my typing? He said you were sensitive about it. Well, I'm not. He's feeding you garbage like you're some kind of barnyard animal. No one's having a good laugh watching you root and snort through his rancid frog. <laughs> Why would he say something like that if, if it were true? You'll learn that Merkin's brain has a mind of its own. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, I never would have mentioned it if I'd known. Do I seem sensitive to you? Do I? I think it's best not to discuss it. But we are discussing it, Dobbit. <laughs> My penmanship was an inspiration to checkers of every stripe. Then word comes down that our reports must be typed. Typed! Why did you bring it up in front of Merkin anyway? Hanrahan, I'm a world-class typist. I can help you. Ah, uh, but then you'd get the credit. Oh, no, I wouldn't take credit. If you didn't take credit, you'd be a fool. Are you a fool? Uh, I'm nobody's fool. You'd be my fool if you did my work from no credit. You, my little fool, love it. No! <laughs> <laughs> then you're trying to steal credit from my good work. You're either a fool or a thief. Which is it, Dovid? Uh, are those my only two choices? <laughs> it's still not a word of apology. I'm sorry. For what? I don't know exactly. I just thought it necessary to clear the air. Unless your apology is false, in which case it only muddies the waters. Is this contrition or cowardice, Dovid? I'm not a coward. <laughs> or maybe you're too scared to admit it. Are you brave enough to admit that you're a coward? Yes. Uh -huh. But that makes me strong. It also makes you a coward. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I be brave enough to admit I'm a coward without actually being a coward? Because then you'd be boasting about something which isn't true, which would make you a liar. I'm certainly not a liar. But we've already established that you're a coward, and cowards will lie when they don't have the courage to tell the truth. <laughs> By insisting on your bravery, you have admitted that you're both a coward and a liar. <laughs> Maybe you weren't so honest about your so-called bravery. That might let you off the hook. Uh, I may have stretched it a, a bit. So you know you're both a coward and a liar, but you're not brave enough to come out and admit it. <laughs> Sad little dream world, dub it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hanrahan? Are you so perfect? Of course not. But I'm an honest man, and precious few can say that. 
I can say that. Usually. And I don't go boasting about all my wonderful qualities. I wasn't boasting. Oh, chatter, chatter, for God's sake, dumb it. This is why I enjoy the river alone. <laughs> Merkin's light just went out. He has to throw it in my face every time he works late. Will he be joining us here at the river? Merkin wouldn't know how to look at a river. He has a, a great deal of authority around here, doesn't he? Oh, is that what he told you? He said he makes decisions for the entire department. You and I are the entire department, Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> he said the two of you are great friends. What a grotesque parody of friendship that would be. <laughs> you dislike him then? Oh. Oh, I can see there's a fox in that hen house, a snake in the grass, a monkey on my back, a wolf in sheep's clothing. No, I just thought that you just thought you'd stick words in my mouth. Well, I trick on your words and I spit them out because I would be stained by your calumny. If you ever try to put another word in my mouth, I'll bite your fingers off. <laughs> Sorry, Gary, it won't happen again. Hannahhead, <laughs> <laughs> look, what are those eyes out there by the fence? Animals. Yeah, yes, I know they're animals. You're not even looking. I've seen them before, Dobbit. What species do they belong to? I believe they're free agents. They're nothing <laughs> going to worry about, Dobbit. They're outside the fence. What do they do? <coughs> they huddle in the dark and they stare at us. Are you going to the room? I was going to. I could walk with you. That won't be necessary, Dobbit. If you'd like to go to the room, go now. Well, if you want to go first. Go, then. Dobbit. Go and be done with it. <laughs> Catherine? Know her? 
Please. <laughs> Relax, darling. I know for a fact that she owned you completely from the moment she accepted your marriage proposal. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, excellent. I never had any reason to doubt her virtue, but... Well, thank you.
in judgment. I wish you would loosen up and be more like us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we're alike? Well, we have our differences, but I'd say we're more alike. And dub it? More different than alike. <laughs> I think being dub it would be a terrible thing. Do you agree? Well, he seems happy. Are you siding with him? I side with no one. And you don't seem to think that would be terrible to be dubbed. <laughs> <laughs> that disappoints me. I think it would be terrible to be anyone but me. Well, it's not terrible for me, I can assure you. Well, maybe not for you, but for me it would be ghastly. Ghastly? <laughs> Why? I found myself utterly remained from the time it took to jam a loaded pistol in my mouth. <laughs> but if you were me, then it wouldn't be you being me. It would be me being me. Which, as I said, is far from ghastly. I'm a greater authority on being me than you could ever hope to be. Well, I guess I'll have to take your word for it, not being you. I'm disappointed in you, I thought if we both felt contempt for Dobbit, it could bring us closer together. <laughs> Sit out here and read this letter from my wife. Oh, your wife? And, and she writes you? I, I had no idea. Every week, like clockwork. If she ever missed a week, I'd assume she was dead in a pool of blood at the bottom of the cellar stairs. <laughs> <laughs> this is all it takes. A ray of sunshine, a letter from my one true love. A stolen hour that's all mine. Well, unless Merkin beeps. Ah, well, that's the beauty of it. I'm just far enough away that I can't hear the beeps. Oh, so if you don't hear the beeps... Well, I can't be expected to go, can I? 
This is where his system breaks down. I've got that bastard by the balls. <laughs> man has to have a little freedom, doesn't he? Well, go on, dub it. Pick away at your silly reports. Peck, peck, dub it. Peck, peck. <laughs> Hey, Hanrahan, what should I do if I hear your two piece? It's only important that I don't hear them. But, but then I'm enmeshed in your conspiracy. You sit out here innocent while, while I am sullied by your chicanery. Won't have it. Hanrahan, you have to sit close enough to hear your beats. But that defeats the whole purpose. As an honest man, if I hear my beats, I have to go. And as an honest man, if I hear your beats, I have to tell you. Why don't you be honest about your deceit and ignore the beats? <laughs> <laughs> the day is ruined. <laughs> unless he's got a damn good reason. It's been a while since he beat. So, well, shouldn't we be concerned? <coughs> Not a good that'll do us. Maybe he's punishing us. Why would he punish us? <laughs> because he's a malignant, two-faced bottom feeder. That didn't get me. What for? I need a perfect recommendation from Merkin. My life is in his hands. My temper has ruined me in this company. One more bad report and I'll be through. And then what? Well, exactly. A man without a company these days is a corpse. But, but you, Dubby, you've got no excuse for being such a toady. I'm no toady. Toady, toady, toady. Stop it! <laughs> Beat. He will. He has to. Sometime. Our checking has been acceptable. Our checking has been excellent. This isn't about checking. This is about the criminal abuse of authority. Our only defense is to stop caring. Don't if you're so anxious, why don't you just scamper up and see your master? I've drawn the line with Merkin. If he wants to see me, he has to be. Oh, so now you're demanding to be treated like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but everything after that is gravy. Wait, did, did you hear?
<laughs> Anderhan, I feel we may be in prison. Why would we be in prison? I don't know, it's just a feeling I have. What, do you think that's we've done something? Well, sometimes things happen and, and you hardly ever know it. You rush out of a store forgetting something's in your pocket. You add the numbers wrong on your taxes. You're coming home on a foggy evening and there's a sudden thumping sound and you notice what might be blood on your fender. So you, you wash your car and play 18 holes and fall asleep in front of the TV with a mug of beer? I mean, these are things we've all done, but how many of us ever get caught? <laughs> If this were a prison, wouldn't there be walls all around There us? are walls all around us! Barbed wire on top, patrolled by armed guards! <laughs> if this were a prison, we wouldn't be free to leave. Do you know anyone who's left this compound? That's by choice. So you think we could leave? Uh, if we got by the guards. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they there if not to keep us inside? Well, well, obviously to keep us safe from what's outside. What's outside? Well, it must be far worse than what's in here to justify all the guards. <laughs> let's just say this is a prison, love it. How are the conditions? If, if it's a prison, I, well, I have to say it's not bad. It's really pretty decent. Yes, and uh, if it's a workplace? Then it's entirely unacceptable. And being a rational man, you'd rather live in a place which is pretty decent than one which is unacceptable. <laughs> but that makes me a prisoner! Exactly! Because you believe you're better off as a prisoner. Face it, Dobbit, you've made yourself a prisoner in what is quite clearly not a jail. <coughs> How can you be so sure? Well, for one thing, you wouldn't survive in a real jail, Dobbit. Yes, I would. I, I'd be a model, a model prisoner. <laughs> but you'd never understand what was really going on. I'd obey all the rules. I, I'd keep my nose clean. Whereas I would understand the Byzantine system of power and intimidation, and I would thrive! <laughs> <laughs> Why must you always be the best, Hannerhead? Why can't I be the better prisoner? <laughs> Actually, you do just fine, Dobbit. You'd be a much desired jailhouse wife. <laughs> Especially among the older convicts who does sow their wild oats and just wanted a clean cell and a little cuddling at dinner. Better head, stop! Good evening, Marcus. Is it? I can't tell with all these damn books! How can you stand it? Or don't they bother you? <laughs> oh, they're quite an annoyance, right? Dub it. Uh, a damn nuisance, all right. <laughs> Did you tell Hammerhead about the economic recovery and realignment day party? Uh, I thought you wanted to tell him. The party? And I wasn't told? Dobbit kept it to himself, didn't he? Invite me, Dobbit. I thought Merkin would do the invite. Why are you saying I have nothing better to do but ruminate on gallows? That's a cheap shot at Merkin. Dobbit. I didn't mean that. You were supposed to tell you. I think Dobbit's a little gadfly. I'm not a little gadfly. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Up the social ladder. Didn't want to be at his party. I want you at my party. Now he thinks it's his party. It's not your party, Dobbit. You're a slippery snake, Dobbit. A short time with a long reach. I hope you'll come to the party, Hanrahan. <laughs> The party has been tarnished for me. <laughs> I'm sorry to report it's been tarnished for our entire department. Read this from our regional director. Well, this, sound, this sounds fantastic. Look, skits, fireworks, games of chess. Read the bottom. Chuckers welcome from 5.30 to 6.15. <laughs> it's an outrage. They're making us, they're making us leave before the, the buffet dinner with the sing-along to follow. I would be part of it. I'm not going. Well, I'm not going. Then we'll stand together as a department this year. There'll be no checkers at the party. That'll show the bastards. We'll have our own. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean it, Mac? Of course I mean it. A giant gallop for checkers only. <laughs> Get out to a party. <laughs> and don't worry, Hanrahan. There won't be a dancing. <laughs> <laughs> don't like to dance, Hannerhead? There's a lot that you don't understand, dub it. I'd like to keep it that way. <laughs> Ice cold. That's exactly the same thing as it happened to me. <laughs> oh, Dobbit, it was far worse. 
like, it happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you're gonna, you're gonna rush over and get the only chair. <laughs> You'll be on your feet for hours. I can hardly wait. It, it's a party, Hannerhan. You look like a fool, planted in your one chair while the rest of us are mingling and carrying on. <laughs> Well, uh, there's my invitation, Dubbit. Don't hear any invitation for you. Looks like you won't be going to the party after all. Still no invitation for you, little man. Don't wait up. <laughs> Typewriter's all yours tonight. You bastard! You're behind this hammer head! You poisoned Morgan against me! Well, I won't have it. You are lonely, friendless, pathetic, malcontent, but you won't find me glued together like Haiti. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm gonna fight you to the death. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You've taken everything from me, but you get out of this party! Of merrymaking. As if something's missing. 
like the heart and soul of this entire organization. Long live the Chekas. <laughs> Why don't they like us? It's the high moral ground we walk on makes them dizzy. <laughs> they think we judge them. We would. We check their party the way we check their work. Anyway, it's best not to fraternize. Our judgments must be cold and impartial. But must we always be on the outside, our noses pressed to this window? They're the ones outside, Dobbit. But, but they're always there, and we're always here. I never knew how lonely it would be when I chose to be a checker. You don't choose checking. Checking chooses you. <laughs> My daddy was a checker. And his daddy before him checked. He used to say, any man can work. But it takes an extraordinary man to check. <laughs> My daddy was a worker. Loathed checkers thought they were maggots, bloated with the blood of honest workers. I only became a checker to cause him pain and disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> then it grew inside of me until it's who I am. A checker. Here, here. Here, here. I may be a neophyte, but there isn't a man alive who's checking his eyes. I love it more than you easily love it. It's my whole life. It's my whole life. It's who I am. We all love checking. <laughs> but none has given up more than calling them father. I've only seen my wife 11 months out of the three years of our marriage. Good God, what a holiday you've had. I love my wife more than life itself, but I wouldn't recognize her if she came through that door. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about sacrifices. I was a continent away when my daughter was born. It was a damn difficult delivery, let me tell you. But with all due respect, Merck, and I believe the birth of my son was far worse than anything your wife might have gone through. Well, when my wife was... My son was born, the umbilical cord was wound tight around his neck. A piece of cake, Dobbit. When my son was born, it was a breach delivery, and my wife was in horrible screaming agony for weeks. Well, maybe my wife simply handled it better. When my wife gave birth, she died. Beat that boy! I'm in Thailand. I get the telegram that she died in childbirth. The company gave me domestic tragedy leave. With Three days per death per family member. I'm talking paid domestic tragedy. <laughs> if you can believe that, boy, it's beautiful. So there I was, walking up the little path to my house, feeling like a slug for missing her death, just as I missed everything else in her life. And who should greet me at the door but my wife? <laughs> the thing. Managed to bring her back. She hadn't been dead long. Long enough for them to write the telegram, obviously. Which they forgot about when the next shift came in. Human error. <laughs> so anyways, we had a high old time that night. Let me tell you, I mean, my god, what a gift. <laughs> uh, what was she like after she died? Quite similar, except she sang. I hear her doing the dishes, puttering around the house, and she start to sing. But it was possessed. Not like any human voice you ever heard. As if someone was singing through my wife. Gave me chills. Go outside and break leaves. Wherever I was, I hear that voice moving through the house like She knew something I didn't, she couldn't tell me. That's when I took the assignment down here. There was a room in that house for both of us. <coughs> no, they're, uh, they're probably wondering if we'll come to their party. Now, tell them we can't tear ourselves away from our own party. Yes? Mm -hmm. now, don't talk amongst yourselves. This won't be but a minute. <laughs> yes?
I'm the ranking official, and I'm not sure what to do. Well, convention would call for putting out the fire! Our issue is that simple! Drinking water is in short supply in the compound, and the only water I'm authorized to use is from the river. Which uh, would quite literally add fuel to the fire. Exactly! <laughs> you can turn an incident into an accident, or an accident into a disaster, or a disaster into a trench. Well, then we can rule that out. Except the alternative is to do nothing. Be perceived as a weakness that could cripple me in the company. Crisis management is a valuable stepping stone around here. This is my art to shine. Is there some middle ground? What, between doing nothing and doing something which will make the situation infinitely worse? <laughs> some decisive action that is without consequence. Merkin, can you just issue a strong statement condemning the fire? <laughs> <laughs> this is my fire, and I must put my stamp on it. Fire units are waiting orders. I must tell them something. It's best to do nothing, Mike, and let the fire burn itself out. Look at you, the innocent bystanders trying to ruin me with your help. <laughs> this is Merkin. I want all non burning water pumped on the fire! Now! <laughs> 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 it's cast quite a, quite a pall on the other party. <laughs> well, that's the good news. <laughs> What's the bad news? Well, now the river's burning out of control. <laughs> I had to show leadership skills so I could be stuck in this compound forever. I got my eyes set on Spain, boys. This could be my ticket out. There's more of them, you know. Out by the fence. I've, I've seen them up close. They have sharp little fangs and insolent yellow eyes. They're not in my guidebook to local flora and fauna, Hanrahan. You won't find them in any guidebook. <coughs> For God's sake, what are they? Would it be better if they had a name? Would that make them go away? If they had a name, I know who was sitting there, watching every move I make, waiting. And what do you suppose they're waiting for? I don't know. I'm not inside their horrid little heads. But I, I know what waiting looks like, and they are waiting. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you do about it? Well, someone should set a, set a trap. Yes, catch it. Study it in the lab. Find out what it is. How would we lure it into a trap? We don't know what they are. How can we be expected to know what they're like? Perhaps they're workers that took a plunge in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Merkin must take it up with the regional director. I, I look into their eyes and I'm very concerned. Well, if we want Merkin's help, we'd best act quickly before his promotion takes effect. How did he know that the water that he pumped onto the fire would cause an explosion that would extinguish the fire? He didn't. He simply blundered on a grand scale. That's the surest means of advancement in the company, Dubbin. You and I are crippled by our competence. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the river. I do too. All I see is a blistered bank where it used to be. Looks as though something started to grow. Already? Turn around, have a look. D do you mean that, Hanrahan? <laughs> Turn around. Oh, yes, flowers are starting to grow. I've always admired your view. <laughs> Something, isn't it? Look wherever you like. <laughs> this this reminds me of home, you know. The terror I can't quite see. <laughs> Do you miss Catherine? Well, I miss the idea of Catherine. I 
miss the future I used to dream about with Catherine? I guess I miss missing Catherine. I've had a mistaken impression of your marriage, Dubbett. Well, the company values a solid family life, and I'm lucky enough to have one. Too much time together, things get out of whack, it hurts me in the company. Uh -huh. But don't get me wrong, in every other way we're perfect. We both love to be at home, we just not at the same time. <laughs> it's just this one issue of proximity. It's a, a bit of a risk. <laughs> It's not that way with my wife and me, Dovid. <laughs> For us, the risk is being apart. You can feel it in her letters. She's drifting away like a ship moving silently off into the fog. You can just make out a dim outline of what was there, but well, soon that'll be gone too. Well, everything will be okay once you go back and see her. Yeah. Yeah, I, I must go back and see it before it's too late. I, I would like to be needed, though. Love it? I, I would like my life to truly matter to someone else. Me to lie to 
poor Henrahan. He'll survive losing his wife. But once the company cuts bait, it's a fast drop to the bottom of the ocean, isn't it? Why must the company cut bait? If Hanrahan learns about his wife, he'll be worthless. We might as well avoid him now. Uh, but Hanrahan treasures honesty above anything. Even over his own survival? I, I don't know. I'm just nonplussed. Well, I suggest you get yourself plus and give me your answer <laughs> right now. Well, if I have to answer right now, my answer is no. Well, there it is. A swift dagger to the heart. I, I've struggled with my decision. For several seconds. You wanted an immediate answer. You didn't even sit down. You told me not to sit down. I thought you might want to go off and think about it some more. Oh, well, could I go off and think about it some more? All right. But don't go off and think about it some more and come back here with the same answer. <laughs> if I go off and think about it some more, I have to agree to write the letter? Why else would you go off and think about it some more? Well, I might go off and think about it some more and come to the same conclusion that I can't do it. Then save us both the team of you going off and thinking about it some more. Well, how can I know the result of going off and thinking about it some more unless I go off and think about it some more? Oh, I know you really did go off and think about it some more. If you come back here and still say no, you give me the insurance, you'll come back here and say yes. <laughs> I can't assure you of anything unless I go off and think about it some more. <laughs> this simple no would suffice. No! Far God, there was something of a safe start to <laughs> shooting that word at me over and over again as if you had a crossbow. I'm trying to do what's right. I, I would do anything for Hannah, anything, except lie. But lying is the one thing that can save him. So, what you're really saying is that you'll do nothing for him. <laughs> Surprises. Why? Oh, let's not be coy, don't you? <laughs> I know what you and Hanrahan are. <laughs> what? Don't make me say it. Well, say it, Murphy, what are we? I, I demand that you say it, what are we? All right. You're palsy-walsy there, I've said so. <laughs> <laughs> None of your brickbats can change my mind. I leave you with my head held high. Congratulations, stop it. You've certainly proven yourself an honest man. Thank you. And all it's cost you is Henry Hen's life. <laughs> Mark and I, I went off and thought about it some more. Is it you and me, dumb it? at your feet today. What petty slur, what glittering gob of transparent puffery landed in your direction? <laughs> he, he's taking up the animal issues with the powers that be. That's all? You've been gone for hours. I, I've been checking the factories. One week to go and we're completely caught up to manufacturing. You said nothing about me? Uh, no, nothing. I knew the truth would be too much for you to handle. Look at you, eyes of verses. I tell you, he said nothing. Do you honestly think you can fool me for an instant? All right, you got me. I knew it. Tell me everything. <laughs> he said, your venomous nature is the reason you excel at checking. Uh-huh. 
Uh, your only joy is belittling others. Yeah. And the very thing that makes you good at your job makes you unfit for human life as we know it. Aha! Hallelujah! A compliment! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for holding out on me, dummit. Now, Merton will have to give me a good report. And with a good report, I can go home and live with my wife. At long last, my life is beginning! Why can't you share in my happiness, Dub? It must everything be about you. <laughs> Were you and Dub laughing? <laughs> when? <laughs> Yesterday. I don't remember. Let me help you. I saw the two of you on the bridge. Laughed. <laughs> <laughs> well then, yes, we laughed. There you were, outside my window, laughing, throwing it to my face like scalding water. We meant no harm. <laughs> you two laugh often. <laughs> I don't know. What were you laughing at? I say, uh, you two must laugh a lot. You can't remember what you were laughing. Do you know how many times you and I have laughed hand in hand? No. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> and one of those times, you weren't even laughing. I was out all alone out there in mid laugh, and I realized you were merely gone. <laughs> <laughs> so once and then, just once in an entire year, yet you and Dobbit stand on the bridge, flaunting your mirth. I'm sorry if we caused you pain. I still remember what we laughed. We're standing over there, looking out at the parking lot. There's a hard wind coming off the desert, which swept the cap off one of the engineers taking his break. He chased after it. But as soon as he got near it, the wind would dance the little cap away from him again. He kept rushing, but soon he lost sight of where he was. And with a final burst of speed, he smashed face first into a utility pole. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember how we laughed, Tannerhan? Tears were streaming down our face. Our insides ached. I bet we laughed a damn sight harder than you laughed, Dot. <laughs> you two were laughing at me, Richard. No, Merkin. You know what you weren't laughing at, then you must know what you were laughing at. No, Merkin, it just means we never laughed at you. Listen to you. You sound as if all you and Dobbit ever do is laugh. Ha 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 ha! How many times would you say you and Dub laughed? I don't know. You're such a wizard with figures. Come on! Over 15? Maybe. Then it's over 15! That's more than twice a day. <laughs> I suggest you put some of the time you spend laughing into your checking. Is that checking suffering? Our checking? Your checking is acceptable. I won't discuss Dub's checking with you. Fair enough. We're near the end of the order, Hanrahan. It'd be a shame to wonder now. Yes, thank you. Hanrahan, why don't you ever laugh in here anymore with me? <laughs> All right, I will. That would be nice. No need to stand on the ceremony. We could laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> now? Yes, now. What would you like to laugh at? I don't know, dummy. Yes, dub it. <laughs> I mean, the truth is, my happiness has nothing to do with dub it. Have you got any idea what it's like to be loved and accepted? No, of course not. <laughs> Gone. 
Maybe you should just temper it in his presence. That's what I do. My happiness is different from yours, Dobbit. It can't be tempered. You know I felt my wife slipping away from me in recent letters, hence my anxiety to go home. Th then I received this. <laughs> when all else is stripped away, the, the pain, the hurt, the endless aching years of doubt, the rainy afternoons when the whole world closes in, the desolate, lonely nights without comfort, the sudden torturous <laughs> intoxications of what might have been the relentless impossible hope that can't be squelched. When all of that falls away, what remains is you and I, the two of us, today, tomorrow, and forever. Because without you, Dobbit, this, this letter has given me a joy I didn't think possible. Never before has she spoken so <coughs> eloquently to the yearning in my heart. Never before have I felt so needed. I'm glad you have this moment of happiness, Hannerhan. It's not a moment of happiness. Dobbit, this is a lifetime of happiness. It's an eternity of happiness. This, this is a happiness that won't stop at the grave. <laughs> but, but things change so quickly. What if all we can trust is what we see before us? Now, see here, Dobbit, to me you don't have what I have, but I won't have you trampling on my happiness. I, I only wish to point out how fleeting one's joy can be to protect you from whatever hurt might be waiting. I'm not going to live my life in fear of what might have been. Do you know what this means, Dobbit? It means that I'm not alone. No, no, you're not alone, Henry. And now that my wife has assured me that we're not alone, we're free to be apart. What, what do you mean? <laughs> well, with Merkin going, you and I could stay on one tour running the department, and we'd go back to the country at the highest level. We'd be set, Dobbit. We'd be them. You'd really stay on? It can all be ours. I can step out of the purgatory I've inhabited since my damnable night of dancing. Oh, I've been haunted, Dobbit. <laughs> there I was, a young jackal on my way up the vine, my first company party, sweating through my suit. And you have to understand, this was during my drinking days. <laughs> anyway, my wife and I ended up on the dance floor, a terrifying place for a man who can't dance. And even then, even then, I knew they were watching a little too far, laughing, pointing, carrying on. So I didn't disappoint them. No. I danced as no man has ever danced before. <laughs> I my limbs in a well, I was the only person out there, and the whole party was just a sorry blur around me. And my poor wife watching me with an awful, stricken smile. <laughs> my dancing was the first sign they had that old Hanrahan wasn't quite like the rest. <laughs> Not quite right for the key posts. The other country assignments followed, the lackluster recommendations. I did everything that I could to lift that curse. I even learned to dance. But that it ever removed the memory of that grisly night. I could prove that wrong. All of them.
never read you that part of my wife's letter. Down. I'd rather stand. Sit! Please. <coughs> no, I work. No one is conversing with my personal correspondence. So? Well, I want to know how this is possible. What happens between you and Doc is outside of my belt. He read and memorized what is most precious to me in the entire world. It's nothing a double lock can't fix. I'm afraid this is beyond fixing. It's beyond fixing, then it must be a fixation. What would you have me do? I've come for my release papers, Merkin. I was told you were staying on. How can I stay on with Dovett now that he's betrayed my trust? I can't let you leave, Henry, and I won't let this happen. Why would it matter to you? You'll be in Spain. <coughs> it wouldn't happen. <laughs> the regional director said my crisis management skills are too valuable to lose. <laughs> Damn that fire! <laughs> I almost wish it never happened. If only I acted in cowardice. You certainly seem frightened and unhinged to me. <laughs> I'm afraid it's too late. Henrihan, if you leave, I'll have no one to talk to. You haven't talked to me in the entire time we've been here together. I wanted to. I tried to. We just never hit on a topic of mutual interest. <laughs> and now it's too late. 
I'm leaving the company. Would you throw all of this away? What's here for me, Merkin? With you staying, I can't even run the department. What's here? Give me a chance, Henrahan. We'll laugh like you and dub it. My door is frequently open. I'm leaving, Merkin. I'm going home to what is good and true in my life. The last Merkin, I'm free. I'm free! Hardly a domestic tragedy, Dobbin. I was under the impression that there was no hope. Of what? I understand her vows prohibit her from even being in the presence of a man. Whose vows? What the devil are you talking about? Your, your <laughs> wife? Joining an, an order? Oh my god. Oh. I thought you knew! My wife has left me and joined in order. How is it that you know this, Dobbin? The Merkin! But then you're a greater fool than I thought. My wife hasn't left me. Her last letter proved beyond doubt that we are one. I'm giving up everything to see her. Harahan, I can't let you leave like this. All right, Dobbin. I know you wrote my wife's letter. No! Don't lie to me! I wrote that letter! You wrote that letter? Those aren't your words, stop it. If you traveled the universe for a thousand years, you would not be able to find those words. I'm telling you, I type wrote it myself. What's the matter, Dobbit? Can't stand the side of a free man. Look for the crooked Y. Nothing you can say will keep me here, Dobbit. The crooked Y on your typewriter. The only way we can part as friends is if you cease and desist your heedless yammering about my wife's letter. Goodbye, Dobbit. Goodbye, Hannerhan. Running with the department won't be half as much fun without you. Ah, yes. You won't be. Seems Merkin didn't get his assignment in Spain. Merkin is staying on? I truly am alone. What can I do, Hanrahan? What all you company men learn to do? Drift silently through the void from one assignment to the next until your time is up. I don't think I can bear it. <clears throat> Oh, you'll be amazed at how fast the years hurtle by. It's the days that last an eternity. Which took every fiber of my being. 
I wonder if you would have done the same for me. What? Of course not. Then you'd have sunk me like a stone to call yourself an honest man. Tell me you lied to me, Hanrahan. All right, I'd lie to you. I'm lying to you now. <laughs> <laughs> What have we done? This, this could have been ours, all of it. It could have all been ours. What a pity we didn't take it. What a pity we didn't tell the truth. And now it's too late. Ha, 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 ha. 